In this video, we will introduce another way to learn the weights in perceptrons and that is called gradient descent. The gradient descent algorithm uses the delta rule which we saw in the last video. So here we are going to see how that rule is used to update the weights. Uh, and you can recall that we have seen something very similar in gradient ascent which we used in logistic regression to learn weights. So it is an iterative algorithm, we know that. So we have a convergence criterion and till that criterion is achieved, we are going to keep updating the weights. So we are going to make steps toward the optimal set of weights and each in each step we are going to make one update and all these updates are going to take us toward the final set of weights that are going to be learned by gradient descent so the batch mode gradient descent looks at all the examples before making an update we'll also look at another variation called the incremental gradient descent or the stochastic gradient descent algorithm which makes an update by looking at one example or it could also be a subset of examples so first off let's do the batch gradient descent algorithm so it's simple very simple very similar to what we learned in gradient ascent we first compute the gradient and the gradient is a vector on w so we use partial differentiation here to compute this for each weight partial differentiation with respect with respect to each weight We derived that as part of the delta rule, right? So that's what we first do. And then here D refers to all the examples. Remember, we had a sigma over D belong to D, right? We had sigma D belong to D and we had something here which referred to the partial differentiation of the error with respect to each weight wi and after calculating this quantity we update the weight to current weight minus eta times the weight update eta is the learning rate we already know that so this eta gives us how much to rely on the differentiation so how much should you update so you have the direction by differentiating and then eta times that gives you the amount of change so the entire thing is the weight update and that is going to be subtracted from your original weight to give the new updated weight so this is the new weight that you learn so this process of computing the gradient and updating the weight is repeated until convergence and convergence is when you no longer have a benefit in updating the weights and usually convergence is said to be achieved when the weights hardly change let's say your new weight value is very close to the weight value that was before then you can see that the weights are not changing much and then you know that your model uh, has converged your algorithm has converged and then you stop the algorithm and return the weights that were learned so this is the batch mode by batch mode we mean we look at all the data because here you see here we have capital D which 
looks at all the examples each example small d belong to capital d and that's why this version of gradient descent is called the batch mode or batch gradient descent now we will look at a variation incremental mode gradient descent incremental mode gradient descent makes an update after looking at each training example so this is beneficial when you have you want your algorithm to travel more in the space to explore more the space more so instead of looking at all the examples to make one update for each example you can make an update so that the algorithm explores the weight values explore the space more than the batch algorithm so here you can just by looking at it one thing you can understand is that many more updates will be made in the incremental mode version than the batch version because for each one you are going to update right so many many more updates to the weights will be considered here when compared to the batch version and another thing that would actually that makes incremental mode gradient descent more beneficial is that there could be some examples which have more impact on on learning versus some examples which have less impact on on learning the weights when you do the batch version you are going to collect all these examples to make one update so the individual examples effect on the weight update would actually come down so even if there is a really good example that helps a lot in the learning process its value will be reduced because we are going to collectively use all these examples to make one update but in the incremental mode gradient descent we can see that each example will have an effect on on the update and that can really help when you have some very um, important examples which can guide the learning process and take your weights in certain directions and um, give you better convergence so that is like an overview but um, there are other stuff that we will look at uh, when we are comparing both these algorithms in a bit so let's look at the algorithm real quick uh, we have the gradient here and now you can see that there is a small d here versus whereas we had capital d in the batch version now the only difference between these two algorithms is that here we have the error of the update to have just a small d whereas in the previous version we had capital D and we did not have this loop there we only had the outer loop only this right this one this loop is extra in incremental mode gradient descent now what is the difference between e capital d of w e small d of w so we know that this is the error function capital d of e capital d of w aggregates the error across all data points all training examples whereas e small d of w does not have the sigma it's for one example so it just calculates the error for that example that's the only thing that's different so now for calculating this delta this quantity delta e small d of w 
we only need to consider this guy here and then do a partial differentiation of this with respect to wi so again similarly in this quantity everything will be the same except this sigma over of d over d will not be present right so that's the only difference so each after looking at each example we are making a weight update because this this step here is inside this four right so we are making an update after each training example now what is the difference between standard or batch gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent we know that the error is summed across all training examples in the batch version whereas the weights are updated upon examining each training example in stochastic version so this is just the algorithmic difference and we also know that stochastic gradient descent can explore the space better by explore i mean after each example it's taking a step so that step the direction of that step will be very different from the step that the batch version would take the batch is aggregating everything and taking a step and there is way more variation among the examples then if you consider all the examples together as one unit so if you consider each example separately and make an update then naturally there is way more variation there's way more variance in the example similarly there will be difference in the directions that the updates are going to take and the algorithm explores the space better when the algorithm explores the space better it is possible that you may reach a better solution so that's why we say that stochastic gradient descent often provides a better provides better convergence can reach a better solution in the end because it knows the space better that's why we say here it avoids falling to local minima as it uses error per training example also known as more exploration Oops. and naturally the batch version is computationally more expensive than the stochastic version because after looking at all training examples it's making one update which means that let's say you have how many examples would you have in a data set let's say 10,000 maybe you can have 100,000 examples lots of data right it's usually possible that you have lots and lots of data to look at and as this grows larger your algorithm is going to be very slow to converge because it's going to make only one update after looking at all these examples and in those cases stochastic gradient descent becomes more desirable and oftentimes in implementation we use stochastic version rather than the batch version because it is more practically feasible all right to summarize perceptrons perceptrons can be learned using perceptron training rule or gradient descent using the delta rule perceptron training rule is only guaranteed to converge if the training examples are linearly separable and has a sufficiently small learning rate and this is again very important if you set the learning rate to really high value it's possible that it can miss convergence
We can also use gradient descent to train perceptrons. It is guaranteed to converge. And even if the data is not separable, still you can use gradient descent to learn a perceptron. Of course, it's not going to give you a perfect classification. If it's linearly separable, there is a correct solution, perceptron training rule with a low in enough small learning rate is guaranteed to find that decision boundary. But if your data is not separable, still you can use gradient descent to learn a perceptron. But perceptrons cannot perfectly classify data which are not linearly separable because it's essentially a linear model. And which is why next we will see more complex architectures where we have networks of neurons so which can give you a more complex decision boundary and can learn to uh, predict with good performance even if your data is not separable.